Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over the BC547 NPN transistor. Transistors can work as switches or amplifiers, but this video will focus on the application of this transistor as a switch. As a switch, the transistor basically allows a large current to flow through the collector, marked in the diagram below, by flowing a small current through the base, as you can see as IB. These two then join and exit at the emitter. So, for this specific application, I'll be showing an example uh, for a project I'm working on where I want to light up a flash, basically an LED that is pretty bright. Uh, and this LED works in an operating voltage somewhere between 9 and 14.8 volts with an operating current at that voltage of 15 milliamps. I will want to do this with an Arduino, so now I'll show you the specs for that Arduino Uno. Going over Arduino's website, we can see basic information. So as we can see in the technical specs, we can see the operating voltage of 5 volts. And if we look a little bit further down, we can see the DC current for an IO pin at max of 20 milliamps. So now, if we compare both the Arduino Uno and the LED flash I want to run, we can see that the operating voltage of the Arduino is 5 volts, while the operating voltage of the LED flash is between 9 and 14.8. And we can see the max current out of a pin for the Arduino Uno, or IO pin, would be 20 milliamps, whereas the LED flash needs 15. On the current, we're okay, except the difference being that those currents are different voltages, being a higher voltage in the LED. Uh, so we're going to need to try something else. We cannot just connect it directly to the Arduino Uno. For this, we're going to use a transistor, specifically the BC547 NPN transistor, as a switch. Now, before we get too far ahead and start testing this with an Arduino, let's actually just test it with a simple circuit that involves a 5 volt supply, 12 volt supply, and a push button, as well, of course, transistor being the BC547 transistor and also a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. So, we see in this circuit that we have a 5 volt power supply going through a push button, then going through a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, then to the base of the transistor, which exits at the emitter and goes to ground. And on the other side, we have a 12 volt power supply, which drives the main LED that we're working with, which then goes to the collector and through the emitter and back to ground. When we look at this in our breadboard schematic, we have here the 12 volt power supply and the positive side then goes to the LED and exits going into the collector as we saw previously on the circuit on the left which then exits at the emitter goes back to ground closing this loop when we look at the other diagram here we have 5 volts which comes here diagonally to the red terminal if you follow along you will see that then that jumps into a switch, which is the same thing we had in the circle on the left. After the switch, we have a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, which goes to the base of the transistor, exit at the emitter, go back to ground. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at how this all works from an electrical engineering standpoint, and let's do the math behind it. So here we have the specification for our BC547 NPN transistor. We can see shown here in the top right uh, table, that the current gain, HFE, also known as beta, is 110. Uh, you can see that given it's 110, let's say you had a current in the base uh, of the transistor of 1 milliamp. In that case, the collector current would be amplified by a factor of 110. So that 1 milliamp would then flow through the collector as 110 milliamp, or it could flow at a minimum at that should you have any sort of device pulling that much current. So that's how we should interpret that gain factor. You could also see that we have the collector to emitter saturation voltage of 600 millivolts as a max. We'll use that worst case scenario for our math. And we have 700 millivolts or 0.7 volts for our base to emitter saturation voltage. So let's go ahead and take a look at the math. We can see that our first equation is 12 volts, so that's our voltage here at the top of the circuit, minus the voltage across the LED, minus the voltage across the collector to emitter, equals zero, which is zero because we got all the way to ground. 
you can rearrange that to say that the voltage between the collector and the emitter equals 12 volts minus whatever the voltage is across the LED. We know that the maximum voltage between the collector and the emitter for saturation uh, is 0 0.6 volts. So that means that the minimum LED voltage would be 12 volts minus this 0.6, which gives us the 11.4 volts. Now, we said before that the voltage of the LED can be anywhere between 9 volts and 14.8 volts. We got 11.4, so this is within range, so we're good here. Now, we know that the voltage between the base and the emitter during saturation is 0 0.7 volts. We got that from the table above. And by looking now at the path from the 5 volt to ground, we know that 5 volts minus the voltage drops across the resistor, which is equal to the current going through the resistor times the resistance, so minus I sub B times 4.7 kilo ohms, minus the voltage going between the base and the emitter equals zero. We can rearrange that to say that the current equals the voltage of the 5 volts minus the voltage drop across the transistor between the base and the emitter, divided by the resistance, that's the current, and that will be 0 0.915 milliamps. Now, that is less than the max allowed by the Arduino, which we looked at earlier, which means we're good here. Now, we talked about the amplification factor, so we know that the current going through the collector equals the amplification factor times the current going through the base. That will be 110 times the 0 0.915 milliamps that we talked, and that gives us 100.6 milliamps, which is greater than the current given by the LED that we reviewed earlier as minimum of 15 milliamps. So we're also good here. Now note that, as I said earlier, that H to F phi, which is the current gain, is normally also referred to as beta in most typical electrical engineering introductory textbooks. Let's go ahead and do a quick test. All right, so let's now go ahead and take a multimeter to take measurements of the input voltage at the 5 and 12 volt inputs, as well as the currents uh, for the LED and our transistor. So I'll be using an amp probe multimeter and also alligator clips that I found super helpful to troubleshoot uh, with breadboards. And I'll add a link in the description in case you're interested in them. So we'll be going ahead and connecting our jumper cables to the alligator clips and I'll be putting one on ground as you can see and the other one at the input voltage and we can see we have very close to 5 volts then I'll go ahead and <clears throat> remove the positive on that one and go to the other rail to see almost at 12 volts so we have confirmed these two as we expected I'll now go ahead and switch the input on the multimeter uh, and set it at the appropriate input so that we can measure current and we'll be removing one of our jumper cables and connect our multimeter cable so that current can flow through it instead of the previous yellow jumper cable that I just removed so we connect it at the same spot where we had it and we set our multimeter to measure current I'll have it in milliamps now when I press the button you see the current flowing through it 0 0.91 milliamps which is very close to what we calculated before which is our base current you can see every time we press the button you're gonna get that number so now let's go ahead and unplug it and set the yellow jumper cable where it was and now let's go ahead and remove this cable set this one on ground this other one right there so we Turn off the power supply and turn on the switch. You see we get 
18.52 milliamps. Now, let's transition to the circuit and breadboard that will be needed for implementation with an Arduino Uno. So as you can see, it's a little bit more complex. On the circuit, <clears throat> we still have our 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, the same transistor, the same LED, same ground, and the 12 volts. Differences will be that from 12 volts, we see here that we would go to the V input for the Arduino. We notice that instead of a switch going to a 5 volt, is simply going to D6 as a digital output from the Arduino. And we see a connection here on the D2 as the digital input, which goes to a push button coming from the 5 volt output of the Arduino. So when the put button gets pushed, we'll have 5 volts here, which will connect to D2. And when the button is released, we know here that we're going to ground, which also goes to ground here. So that ground will come here. Now, what happened if we didn't have this resistor? Then whenever you push the button, you essentially will be causing a short circuit, which would cause damage. So this resistor, a large resistor of 20 kilo ohms, is there to protect this Arduino. And if you just simply put a push button without all this, it will be a floating pin, which would cause this issue. So by placing this here, you ensure that it's either going to be 5 volts whenever you push the button, or when you release it, it's going to be connected to ground. Other than that, no major changes on the circuit. Uh, over here, you simply have the 12 volts in the ground, and we have the same loop going through the LED from there to the transistor, specifically uh, the collector, then to the emitter, then to ground. And then we have the base, a resistance, and that goes to the digital output number 6, as we saw earlier. And we have our digital input 2, which, when you loop around, it goes to the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, and there to ground, and then we also have the switch, which goes to the 5 volts. And those 5 volts are connected here with the Arduino. Here we also have the same ground, and then ground here to the common ground, and then the V input that we talked before, the 12 volts. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Arduino code that we'll be using for this example. First, in the first line, we see that we identify button 2 as an integer, which will be the digital input coming from the button. Then we have input number 6 as LED, which will be the digital output that goes to the transistor, specifically the transistor base. We'll create a variable called button state. We'll set it at 0 to begin with, which will be a variable to handle the push button state. All right, then we'll define the pin mode for the input and the output, so the button as an input the LED as an output. And now we'll go ahead and define our logic. So if the button state is zero, we'll set the LED to high. So output number six or IO number six, and otherwise we'll set it to low, which will turn on and off the LED. All right, so we'll now set up our breadboard using the Arduino circuit we reviewed previously. We'll go ahead and start placing the Arduino Uno and all the required components. Once done, we'll go ahead and test it. So you can see every time we press the push button, the LED lights up. Same as before. So this concludes this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very much.